everybody, this is Scott Woods, Product Manager for SolidWorks Composer here at Hawkridge Systems. And today we're going to be going over creating a printable assembly instruction manual out of SolidWorks Composer. All right, so the first thing we need to do is open up a SolidWorks file into SolidWorks Composer. And that's as simple as going to File Open, select the file, merge it into a new document, and click Open. It'll take roughly a few seconds for it to open up in Composer to convert everything from SOLIDWORKS into the Composer format. Once we have it in Composer, we add anything special we want to add to it, such as perspective view um, and create a view on the left here. So every single time you make a change and you want to save it, you simply update or create a new view. Here I'm just changing some colors. We'll select this wheel here and we'll make it, I don't know, semi-transparent, whatever this element is. Select the rest of it, make it maybe a metal or a plastic. Uh, really, the choice is up to you. Once you get it into Composer, you can go ahead and basically assign any colors or material attributes as you want. Here, I want to make this um, kind of good looking, so kind of marketing value. So let's go ahead and in the environmental properties, we'll turn on shadows, turn on ambient occlusion, go through and just kind of angle this looking how we want it. I always like this first view in the view tree here to be as best as it can. And then from there, we create anything else we want to author. Here, I'm going to use the assembly selection mode to select the railing on the right, that entire assembly, drag it away from the model, because this is going to be part of our step-by-step -step assembly, assembly instructions. So now that we've pulled it out, I can turn off that mode. We'll go ahead and select the standard trans, uh, transform or translate tool grab the items we want to translate, pull them away from the model, and create a real quick and simple um, exploded view. Once we drag these items, uh, here I just use the copy transformation to copy the transformation from one item to the next. We'll go ahead and create those views and play with the rendering style a little bit here. I went ahead and set this to a custom rendering style and then just simply select the items that we want and change those to a tech illustration rendering. Once I have that, let me go ahead, ahead and uh, invert my selection, select all the other parts, except for the parts we're not selecting, make that more of a silhouette type rendering. All right, now that we have our custom rendering styles, let's go ahead and start creating the step-by-step -step instruction steps. So before we start making the step-by-steps, we want to create what's called a camera view. This camera view will set the angle, the position of the camera. That way we can go ahead and reference that later on at any given time. Once that's created, I'm going to come in here, start making some exploded lines. By holding down Alt, I can actually reference the center of any edge, any circular edge that I want. So here I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Let's go ahead and click, click one more time. You want to right-click once you're done to end, end the tool and then left click again to restart it somewhere else. Once you have your exploded lines or your polylines, everything in Composer, two dimensions is saved in the collaboration tab. There they can be selected and attributes can be applied within the properties menu. Here I'm just gonna go and specify the width and the type of line. We're gonna do this dot dash dot kind of style and uh, activate that camera view and go ahead and update or create the new view. Once that's done, we're going to simply select the model click on Restore Neutral Location for Composer to automatically animate that component back where it belongs. The CAD tool specifies where these parts belong, so we can easily reference that in Composer. And just simply click on it, say Restore Neutral Position, it goes to where it needs to go, and uh, it actually does the animation for us. Now, in Composer are workshops. In the workshops are things like this two-dimensional two image library that has tools. It's, most, it's kind of like a toolbox um, in a 2D format. These are just images. We can take any image that we want, bring it into this directory, drag that into Composer, and use it as tooling, uh, annotations, any kind of imagery we want, create the, uh, the attachment points, and uh, tell that story of what Composer does best. All right, so let's go ahead and create the last step of the process here, or one of the last steps, I should say. And we're going to hide these components that we made, these 2D components, select these extra um, two, two, two parts down here at the bottom, then we're simply going to, again, say we're still in neutral properties or store neutral position, I should say. They go into location, and now we can add any two-dimensional two elements such as arrows. Here I'm going to go ahead and apply this arrow. And again, I held down Alt there to attach to an edge. And in the properties of this arrow, I can 
uh, color it any way I want. We can reposition it. We can go ahead and say that it's uh, not transparent. It's going to be green and um, so forth. Now, apl uh, by applying this or updating the current view, I can apply this arrow and then move on to the next. So here, let's go ahead and turn assembly selection mode back on, select our parts, tell them to restore neutral location. Because this is a sub-assembly, the entire sub-assembly goes into location. Now from there, uh, we have our step-by-step -step complete. Let's go back to the original uh, ISO view at the front, which is our marketing image, and we're going to then extract these as a series of images. Each one of these views is going to have its own specific image. Within the high resolution workshop, here we're going to specify the resolution, the DPI, and the quality of the image. Now, once we have these set, we go to our multiples tab. Down at the bottom of that, there's a views option for extracting all views in a single shot to a directory. Now, what we're doing here is we're exporting all of these steps as views from Composer to this directory, and since Composer's associative to SOLIDWORKS, it's also associative to these images. Once the SOLIDWORKS file updates, it updates in Composer, and then we simply create these images or overwrite these images. Now, since these images are always linked back to the original SOLIDWORKS files, we're now going to link these into a Word document. So by creating a Word document, I simply am going to do basic Word stuff here. We're going to create some columns and some rows and inserting a picture. However, I'm not going to insert the photo. I'm going to actually insert and link it into the Word document. So when the SOLIDWORKS file updates, it updates in Composer. It's going to update these images that are in this directory, and then the Word document is going to always be updated to the original CAD model. Here we go, insert and link, insert, the, insert this photo. Let's go ahead and do this one more time. We'll go insert and link, put that photo right in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and repeat this for all the steps. Once we have all of our photos in this Word document, then we're going to go through and simply create all the text that we need. All right, so just a recap of what we've done here is we brought SOLIDWORKS files into Composer. Within Composer, we created our step-by-step -step assembly instructions. We took those steps, exported them to a directory as a series of images. Now, once those images are in that directory, we created a Word document, brought those images into Word as links. So now, when the SOLIDWORKS CAD models update, you go into Composer, you say update, all your steps update, you say extract to this location. The first time you extract to that location, it creates the images, the second time it updates those images. So now that the images are updated and Word is linking to them, Word is automatically linked. Thus, we've created a step-by-step -step printable instruction manual that is still associated back to the original CAD models. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Again, this is Scott Woods, product manager for SOLIDWORKS Composer here at Hawkbridge Systems.